Let's face it, most people aren't making massive turkey feasts on the regular, and after 364 days of not thinking about it, it can be hard to get that bird just right. That's where Instacart, the holiday rescue app, comes in. From getting all the ingredients to prep a full seasonal spread to getting last-minute swamps in a turkey emergency, Instacart has everything a holiday host needs to save face and save dinner. And right now, if you download Instacart, you get free delivery on your first three orders and delivery in as fast as one hour. Offer valid for a limited time. $10 minimum per order. Additional terms apply. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. We dealt with the false prince of Revelation chapter number 13. And tonight I want us to deal with another aspect. I want us to deal with the false prophet of Revelation chapter number 13. Tonight, we're going, like I said, we'll pick up in verse number 11. The first part of the chapter deals with Satan's false coming of the false prince. The remainder of the chapter has to do with a mysterious person conjured up by Satan to act as the propaganda chief for the beast. This person is called the first is called a false prophet. The first beast is possibly a Gentile or at least partly Gentile since he comes up from the sea. The second beast, the lamb-like beast, is probably a Jew, which we know that that, would, uh, that could be or it will be a possibility. He comes up out of the earth, a Bible symbol for the nation, or for the Hebrew nation and for God's earthly people, is, a, uh, is there. The great function of the second beast is to glorify the first beast, the Satan, the beast, the false prophet, form a satanic trinity, Anything that God has, Satan imitates, right? So God has the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, the God the Holy Ghost. Satan here will have a Trinity. You have Satan, the beast, and you'll have the false prophet. And what did uh, the false prophet will do as Jesus did? Jesus came to the earth to tell about his heavenly Father, right? And then... You see that the beast here would represent what we would consider the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is everywhere inside of us, right? And then Satan himself would represent as God, if you want to put it in those ways. So you see how that trinity aligns. And so that would, that would make perfect sense. So this beast tonight, there's a few things about this beast is, uh, that I want to give us tonight. First of all, the beast has a deceptive appearance. We know that Satan has a deceptive appearance. The Bible doesn't say that Satan comes out with the horns and a pitchfork, but Satan, the Bible says that Satan is an angel of what? Light, right? So he's very deceptive. All right, verse number 11. The Bible says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. But notice this. And he spake, as a dragon. We know that the first beast has 10 horns. The second one has two horns. These two horns represent two things. Or it represents, let me back up. The, <laughs> the 10 horns represent territory of the first beast. And we can find that if you have your Bibles tonight. Go with me to Revelation chapter number 17 tonight. Revelation chapter number 17 tonight. And I will find my place there as well. When you find your place there, say amen. amen. All right, verse number 12. The Bible says, And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as of yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. So we see that the ten horns represent territory, represents power. Then we see that testimony is symbolized by the two horns of the second beast. And of course, it is a false testimony. This beast looks like a lamb. Why would the, beast, why would the second beast want to look like a lamb? Who is what's Christ recognized as? A lamb, right? Isaiah chapter number 53 puts Christ in as a sheep before his shears is done, and he opened not his mouth. When we see here tonight, a lamb is gentle, 
harmless and innocent and ceremonially is noticed as clean, right? When God required a sacrifice, he always required what, what as a sacrifice? A lamb, right? It had to be inspected for 14 days. It had to be checked for all imperfections. And most of the time, the lamb was perfect without spot or blemish. When the false prophet appears, he will first seem to be all of these things. Nobody will be frightened of him, for like a lamb, he will seem to be meek and lowly and will therefore be grossly underrated by mankind. When you think about that, if you go out into a field and there's a lamb and there's a bull, which one are you most likely to pet? The lamb, right? Because it's calmer. It's not going to throw its. It's not going to do its best to hurt you or harm you or any of that. And so, when you think of this tonight, the lamb is very easy. It will be very easily to get in and to persuade people. When the second beast has horns of a lamb, but he speaks like a dragon, the very voice of Satan is heard when he speaks. Go with me tonight to John's Gospel, chapter number 8 tonight. John's Gospel, chapter number 8. Tonight, John's Gospel, chapter number 8. When you find your place in John's Gospel, chapter number 8 and verse number 44, say amen. All right. I'll give y'all just a second here. John's Gospel, chapter number 8 and verse number 44. When you find your place there, say amen. amen. All right. The Lord here is talking about Satan. He said, ye are of your father, the what? Devil. Devil. Now, that ain't a person that you want to be called your father, is it? Moving on here. He said, in the lust of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. Well, wait a minute. For those that believe that Satan was saved before he was cast out of heaven, this can't be true because the Bible says here that he was a murderer from the beginning, then that would contradict the book of 1 John chapter number 4 and verse number, was it 12 or 15? That says that he that hateth his brother is a murderer and no murderer hath eternal life. So we see that that would contradict. And we also know that us that are saved, we have the truth in us, right? That truth be in Christ. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Here he said that the devil didn't have any truth in him. All right. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So when the dragon speaks here, he will speak as Satan, the father of lies. Go with me tonight to the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. Another thing about this dragon when he speaks. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2 tonight. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. When you find your place in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2 and verse number 11, say amen. All right. Now when you read, when you look at the heading and you study 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2, it is talking about the day of the Lord. We know that the day of the Lord is the second coming of Jesus Christ. And it's also talking about the man of sin. Who is the man of sin? The Antichrist, right? So we get here to 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2 and verse number 11. The Bible says, And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a what? Lie. Who would be speaking this lie? The devil, right? And he says that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So we see here tonight that the devil is the father of all lies. And that's a sad thing. Moving on tonight. We know that attracted by the dynamic of the beast and assured by the, by the seeming of the false prophet, Men will take it as face value, the monstrous lie. They are now to be told, and the satanic trinity now formed, the beast is the anti-God. We can go back, uh, Cassie, if you want to go back to Revelation chapter number 13 and verse number 6 tonight. Verse number 6, when you find your place there, say amen. Amen. All right, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name 
and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. So we know that the beast here is anti-God. Move it on. The false prophet is the Antichrist. It, it acts as the Antichrist. The Satan is the anti-spirit. And the spirit now worketh within the children of disobedience. You say, preacher, prove it. I will. Go with me to Ephesians chapter number 2 tonight. Ephesians chapter number 2. Ephesians chapter number 2 tonight. Ephesians chapter number 2. When you find your place in Ephesians chapter number 2, say amen. amen. All right, verse number 2. Wherein time passed, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that'd be Satan himself, right? And according, uh, excuse me, to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of what? Disobedience. Why are they disobedient? Because they have believed a lie. So we not only see the deceptive appearance here of the false prophet. Everybody good on that? We're all good to say that. All right. Secondly tonight, I want us to look at the dynamic appeal of the false prophet tonight. The dynamic appeal of the false prophet. All right. What do you see here tonight? Go with me to verse number 12. And when he exercised us all the power of the first beast before him, and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. Now notice this tonight. This beast has now performed another miracle that Christ has performed. Y'all see the similarity here, right? What wound was healed on Christ? The wounds of his hands and feet, right? Right? Because he told Thomas, he said, touch the nail print in my hand and the wound in my side, right? So when we think about this tonight, the deadly wound that was healed, when we think about the crucifixion, we think about how Christ was beaten, how he was beaten unmercifully, and his wounds were healed except for the nail prints in his hand and the one in his side. The first beat of the beast here, his deadly wound has been healed. When we see this tonight, the false prophet becomes the chief executive officer of the new regime under the beast. He is the organizer and propagator of new religion. What is that religion? It's going to be a one world universal religion. And is the head of Vicar of the new Caesar cult. The authority of the false prophet is derived from the first beast. We know that the first beast is the man of sin, the son of perdition. And whom Satan invests his power. And if you've got time this week and you want to read that, you can find that in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2, verses 1 through 12. We don't have time to go through all of that tonight. The conspiracy is intended to channel worship to Satan through the person of the beast. The role of the false, false prophet will be to make the new religion appealing to men. We're already, I mean, we're already there to that extent. One thing that we have tried to do is churches is try to make Christianity appealing to men, right? We do our best to we do our best to adapt and change what we need to change without changing the message. We may change our methods, but here the false prophet will have the ability to massively change religion to where everyone wants a part of it. And you know, Satan wants every man tonight to have religion. He just don't want us to have salvation. Satan could care less that you come to church every Sunday or every Wednesday. Satan could care less that you sing in the choir. Satan could care less of all of these things. But one thing Satan does not want you to do is accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. He wants you to be bound in religion but not have salvation. Does that make sense tonight? Religion and salvation is two different things. We must remember that. Moving on tonight. No doubt the false prophet will combine all the features of the religious systems of men and will appeal to man's total personality and will take full advantage of his carnal appetite. When we think about that tonight, what church tonight has done its best to appeal to every man's religion? Anybody want to tell me? 
It'd be the Catholic Church, right? They'll tell you, I don't care if you're Muslim, I don't care if you're Buddhist, I don't care if you're this, I don't care if you're that. Just come in and worship with us under our umbrella. All right? When you look at that, that is where the ecumenical movement somewhat began. Does that make sense tonight? We separated. We don't care what religion. We don't care what you do. We just all come together and we worship a generic God. And that's sort of what it is. And that's sad when we think about that. That's sad. And that is what the Catholic Church has, prou has prided itself on throughout the years. When you look, God is going to use Rome in the last days as the landing post. When, you're get, when we get later into, if I believe if I remember correctly, we get later in the book of Revelation, it talks about, it's in the book of Revelation, it talks about the great whore. And if you look, it's mounted in Rome, that would have to be the Catholic Church. Does that make sense tonight? So when you study it out, and uh, we'll get to it when we get here. Uh, no doubt he will do everything to make it appeal to man's total personality, take full advantage of his carnal appetite. The, the dynamic appeal of the false prophet will lie in his skill in combining political, ex um, expediting with religious pass uh, passion, self-interest with philanthropy, a lofty sentiment, and moral platitude with unbridled self-indulgence. Everything with this religion will all be about the beast. Make sense? His arguments will be subtle to move the masses to tears or whip them into a frenzy. He will control the communication media of the world and will skillfully organize mass uh, publicity to promote his ends. He will be the master of every promotional device and public relations gimmick. He will manage the truth with guile beyond words, bending it, twisting it, and distorting it. Public opinion will be to his command. He will mold world thought and shape human opinion like so much potter's clay. You said that's no way that'll happen. It already happens today. We, hear, we get one group of people that watches Fox News. We get another group of people that watches CNN, and they both have formed their opinions. Does that make sense today? <laughs> and somewhere, you got it somewhere, if you watch Fox, CNN, well, you ain't watch CNN, please don't do that. Watch Fox or Newsmax and somewhere draw the line in the middle and you'll have a good idea of what's the truth. But when we think about this tonight, he will have control of the media. He'll be able to put out his propaganda. Uh, moving on. We see here tonight, his deadly appeal will lie in the fact that what he says will sound so right, so sensible, and so exactly what unregenerative men will always wanted to hear. When you think about that, that, un, that word there, unregener, unregenerated, there means unsaved. It'll be a worldly-minded man. Tonight it will be a God, it will not be the gospel, but it will be a message that is deceiving. Does that make sense tonight? We see this tonight. It will have a dynamic appeal. Everyone will want to go do it. Moving on, it will also have a deadly approach. What do you mean it'll be a deadly reproach? Approach. He, he is deadly in the way he blinds mankind. How do, you, how do you get that? Go with me to verse number 13 tonight. This is how he'll do it. And he doeth great wonders. Well, when Jesus came to this earth, he did great wonders, right? So that he make a fire come down from heaven. Well, when you think about that, Elisha did that when he dealt with the prophets of Baal. The things that these people hated and refused to accept, now they will accept, but only not from God, but from the beast himself. Moving on, verse number 14. 
and deceiving them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. Verse 16. And he had the power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. This sounds like the days of Nebuchadnezzar. Sounds like the days of Belshazzar. It's another, it's another aspect here. He will be deadly. The Jerusalem temple will, be, will have been rebuilt by this time. The beast, having turned against a Jew, will march his troops into the temple to set up his image in the holy place and command that it be worshipped. When you think about this, this wasn't the first time that this has happened, right? Moses came off the mount, and there was Aaron and the people of God worshipping a golden calf, a beast, right? When Solomon was in charge of building the first temple, was there not false idols and false gods in that first temple? Because he had married, he had been married and he had, what was it, 300 wives and 700 concubines? Was that right? Am I right? Am my numbers right on that? And if you study that, that was his first mistake, all right? Then he didn't learn after the first 299, all right? <laughs> when you study that, each one of those women that he had had a different religion. Study it out, all right? And they worshiped different gods, and he tried to please them all. So this wouldn't be the first time that this has happened. This is the abomination of desolation. So we've heard that mentioned in Scripture, right? Where have we heard it? Go with me to Matthew chapter number 24 today. Matthew chapter number 24. Matthew chapter number 24. When everybody finds herself in Matthew chapter number 24... And verse number 22, say amen. amen. Everybody find your place there? Say amen. amen. All right. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Verse 24. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible they should deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Go with me to Daniel chapter number 12. So we see Jesus himself prophesied. Go with me to Daniel chapter number 12 tonight. The book of Daniel chapter number 12. The book of Daniel, chapter number 12. Daniel, chapter number 12. When you find your place in Daniel 12, say amen. amen. All right, verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth, for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found in that book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise will shine as brightness of the firmament. And they that turn away to right, turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. When we look here tonight, we see here that the Lord prophesied his coming. He prophesied 
what would happen with the false Christ and the false prophet. We can look, and I don't have time to chase it down tonight, we can look in the book of Revelation. I'll give you these verses tonight, and you can write them down, and if I go too fast, tell me, all right? Revelation chapter number 14 and verse number 9. Revelation chapter number 14 and verse number 11. Revelation chapter number 15 and verse number 2. Revelation chapter number 16 and verse number 2. Revelation chapter number 19 and verse number 20. And Revelation chapter number 20 and verse number 4. Does everybody have those verses that they've written down? Everybody good? All right. So tonight when we see this, to worship this image will be the crowning act of blasphemy for mankind. For this sin there will be no forgiveness either in this life or the next. Yet to refuse to worship will be to incur the, incur the wrath of the beast and to court imminent death. The bringing of, to life of the image is an unexplained miracle of Satan. We think about this tonight. I, can I give you a little bit of smithology on this? Y'all like that? When we think about the beast and the building an image to it and falling down to worship it, and this beast will be able to speak, all right? Why couldn't that beast be a robot? We have the technology for it. Artificial intelligence is here. You can ask Alexa or Google, anything. They'll give you the answer. 99% of the time, it is the right answer, right? So when we think about this tonight, they make, he had the power to give life. It could be a real life beast, but you can give a robot life. It's easy to do. Do y'all remember, I probably should tell this. Y'all remember the TV show that came out on HBO several years ago called Westworld? And the man built this robot and then the robot had all this power to do all of these things. Y'all ever watch that? It was sort of weird. I got lost at, like see, at, at the end of season one, and I tried to start season two, and I quit, okay? It just got out of control. But anyway, we think about that. The other night, me and Brittany and her family went out to eat to a Mexican restaurant, all right? And they had a robot. They put your food on this robot, and they tell that robot which table to go to, and that robot brings your food. A server doesn't carry your food. All right? So when you see that, and you think about this, I mean, I'm not saying that this beast is gonna be a robot, but it very well could be. It'll have the power to speak, it'll have the power to do all these things, and people would fall down and worship it. That would make, per I mean, to me, it would make perfect sense. But it's neither here nor there. That's just my thought on this. Um, the devil himself lurking behind the idol will lend the wood, the stone, his own life force. So then the false prophet, the agent both of the beast and of Satan will blind mankind with strong delusion, making beast worship the universal religion of lost mankind. And that's a sad thing to think about. All right, moving on. Not only would it would not only would it will he blind them, but he binds man. When he sends in his deadly approach, he not only blinds them, but he binds them. When you think about that tonight, the false prophet binds men. How does he do it? Cleverly. Go with me to verse number sixteen tonight. Verse number 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, or where else? In their forehead. Now, why does it have to be in the right hand or the forehead? Because not everybody has a right hand, right? It, they could be a birth defect. It could be something else that caused it. 
When we see this tonight, the Roman Empire, a citizen, had to offer a pinch of incense on a pagan offering, altar as a token of his loyalty to a cult. This was just a pinch of salt. Christians refused to do it and perished by the thousands for their loyalty to Christ. In a coming day, the last of the Caesars will make it like a demand. He will require a simple mark stamped on the forehead or hand as a token of allegiance. Do I want to go down this path? Can I go down this path? Y'all ain't going to judge me for going down this path? There's already a religion that marks your forehead. Catholics. Catholics. Ash Wednesday. If you're a Catholic or a part of the Protestant movement, I think, don't Methodists do it some? Okay. Yeah, uh, there's uh, there's lots of churches that do it, like Lutheran, Episcopal, any of the breakoffs of the Catholic Church that still hold true to Catholic doctrine to some extent. They have Ash Wednesday, and what do they do? They get a mark of a cross, and what supposedly what I've been told from those is they wrote their sins on a piece of paper they burned them, and now they've been forgiven. Well. I didn't have to write my sins down. Christ forgave mine. And I, they some people, I wonder how they write all their sins on one sheet of paper. <laughs> There's some people, if I wrote their sins down, I would still be writing tonight. I wouldn't be sitting here. But not only that, but then you think about like the Hindus, the East Indians. They mark, right? They just mark their women, but they put a mark on their forehead, right? It's a red dot. And... Uh, Moving on. So we see here, one and all the unregenerate of the earth will line up to receive the brand of the beast in a universal display of solidarity. Under Hitler, he had his brand, right? The two S's. That would let you know. So these will be convinced that the beast can be centered, a common government, a common market, and a common faith. Others will receive the mark because they are careless. It will make no difference to them one way or the other. They might just as well bow to the beast as to some other dictator. As for the mark, well, so what? Others will receive the mark because they are, because they are craving for attention. Not to receive that brand will be highly dangerous for it will put a person into the very unpopular and smart small minority, a minority opposed to a pan-world fed, uh, federation for peace, progress, and prosperity under the highly popular beast. So then for one reason or another, men will accept the mark. When we think about them accepting the mark, cleverly in the name of world unity, under a guise of the good of mankind, the false prophet, binds mankind. He binds them not only cleverly, but completely. Verse number 17. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Right? When you look at this tonight, John draws our attention to the sweeping extent of the success of his scheme. There will be a total economic enforcement of the will of the beast. We're almost, we're almost there. We're moving to a cashless society, and pretty soon the federal government will be able to monitor every transaction, if things go the way they want it to go. We'll be able to monitor every transaction that you and I do, right? At that time, when the Antichrist comes, he'll say, all right, you don't have the mark, I'll freeze all of your assets. You can't do nothing. Does that make sense tonight? We think about this, we know that the mark of the beast, some have taught that it'll be a small chip the size of the grain of rice, and it'll have all of your information in it. Okay? It'll have your name, your birthday, all of your information. 
Well, when you think about that, that may not be far off because how many of you have a debit card here tonight? Raise your hand, or a credit card. How many of your new credit cards have a chip in it? What kind of chip is it? It's a, con it's a contactless chip, right? I can walk up, I can lay it close to a credit card reader, and that little chip has all of my information in it. And what's the purpose of that? To keep somebody from being able to steal my credit card, right? That way I don't have to put it in a machine and somebody scan all my information. The purpose of the chip that you might buy or sell. What's one thing that we hear about? Identity theft, right? So what better way to market the chip? Why not just get this little chip inserted in your right hand or in your forehead, and when you walk into the store and you want to buy something, lay your hand down or put your head down, it'll scan it. Nobody can steal your identity. You want to go, into a, you want to go somewhere like a doctor's office? We'll just scan your chip. It'll have all of your information there. No more writing it out. It'll all computerize. So it'll be easy to deceive mankind. Does that make sense tonight? Am I good on this? All right. So there will be no sale. From one end to the earth to the other, not a single wheel of commerce will move without the sign of the seal. Nor will any black market system either dare or desire to defy the will of the beast. So think about that. There won't be nobody out there that'll say, okay, we're going to do the black market system. We're going to, I'm going to buy up a bunch of canned goods and I'm going to sell it to you secretly, right? No, that won't work. They won't have any desire to defy. Why? Because it's all a part of the plan of God. All right, so not only do we see the success of the scheme, me and every man will do it. But then I want us to look at the single exception to that success. Verse number 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of man. And his number is six hundred, three score, and six. We see here the Greek and Hebrew alphabets have numerical values attached to the letters of their respective alphabets. The beast's name, when it is known, will yield the number 666. Six, six. This number, mystic and mysterious as it is, has taxed the, in, has taxed the very mindset of commentators from the very beginning. People have seen it and has pointed it out. That number 666 is the sum of all numbers that make up the square of six. It is claimed to be the symbol of ancient mysteries. Was SSS or 666. Gallons of ink have been spilled in sinking to interpret the meaning of the number 600, three score, and six. When the beast comes, the enlightened will recognize him by the number of his name, being thus forewarned. They will be forearmed and will be able to make swift and secret arrangements to get away into the wilderness and wait the Lord's return again from glory. Those that will make that will be what? Jews, right? They will scatter them. We think about this word 666, if I remember correctly, do y'all remember the old Microsoft Word? Was it Microsoft Word or was it Note? That used to have what they called webdings. Y'all remember that? And you could type stuff out in it. Y'all remember that, Cassie? You remember that? God, am I the only weirdo that remembers that? Anyway, when, we, when you would type in, like you would type in a letter and it would give a weird, it would give a symbol or it would give a number. And when you typed in, if I, if, God, I was young. When you typed in www, or when you typed in w, it translated to the number six in that. So when you typed in www in your internet, in order to go somewhere, you type in 666 to go into the internet. Think about that. Am I right about that, Jim? You're right. See, I knew I wasn't crazy. Do you remember the web dings? 
Did you remember those web things that I was talking about? Okay, so I was right about it. Was it. One of the first things that was brought to bear. Yeah. When it came out. And I think they're still out there, just people don't hadn't thought about it or used it yeah. in a long time. But yeah. But all right, any questions? We're done. We'll pick up in Revelation chapter number 14 in two weeks. It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, void, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus.